Today, I want to talk about this new class action lawsuit filing. I want to talk about whether we as AMC shareholders should be worried. Could AMC be delisted as a result? Does this lawsuit actually have legs or not? And finally, could this actually be good for the squeeze or bad? Or stay tuned and let's make some money. And now I want to dive straight in with the cumulation. So, unusually, I actually want to start off by playing devil's advocate. The shills have been saying for some time now that we should sue Adam Aaron and AMC for their malpractice, and actually by suing them, it could cause the squeeze. Now, I do think this is a bit of a far-fetched idea, but if by suing AMC and Adam Aaron, it somehow causes these shorts to cover, causing the AMC squeeze, I'm definitely not going to be mad. But I personally believe that if anything, this is simply a chance's attempt at trying to scare genuine AMC shareholders into selling their shares before the reverse split and conversion. Tony Donaro has said this is a rashly put together lawsuit with many inconsistencies and actually many incorrect points being made. If anything, this is likely a fund or has been funded by someone that is likely short on AMC and needs shareholders to sell their shares to close out of their short positions on the cheap. The first thing I found very unusual was just how quick Al from Boston reacted and posted a video. Before it was even coming up in any kind of news articles, Al from Boston somehow had the source. I also think it's a very unusual lawsuit to come from a pension fund that has 0.1% of their fund actually invested into AMC. Now, if you've seen their financial statements, they currently hold around $92 million in total in US listed stocks. So if $92 million is 100%, $9 million is 10%, $900,000 is 1%, $90,000 is 0.1%, and $9,000 is 0.01%. That means this pension fund is currently holding around $9,000 of AMC shares and has taken a loss, but it seems unusual for a pension fund to be opening a giant lawsuit against AMC for a mere $9,000 investment. I personally know that many of you apes out there are holding significantly more than $9,000 worth of AMC shares. And as Nate tweeted, he said the retirement fund wants to sue AMC. But what for? Look at their performance, they've taken on giant losses so far this year, and barely any of that is actually attributable to AMC. He said this retirement fund won't go after the manipulators or any of the larger companies they've taken losses, but will happily go after a movie theatre. And Nate thinks that someone is very likely behind it and is just simply trying to scare you, the retail shareholders. For example, 5% of their fund is invested into Microsoft where they've taken a 16% loss. 3% of their fund is invested into Amazon, where they've taken a 31% loss, and around 3-4% to is invested into Alphabet or Google, where they've also taken around a 30% loss. So why aren't they suing Microsoft, Amazon and Google for these giant, giant losses? Why instead are they suing AMC when they only hold a mere $9,000 position? And for that matter, why aren't they actually suing Novavax where they've taken a 91% loss on their investment instead of suing AMC where they've only taken an 81% loss? And as Ratoy tweeted, he said, why did it take this pension fund so long to start suing AMC? Or more likely, why did it take them so long to find an excuse to delay the vote when they have barely any beneficial ownership? Why did they wait two years to sue AMC when they're only holding around $9,000 of shares? Either somebody's behind it, or more likely they actually have a larger short position that's about to be screwed. And as a bit more confidence on why shorts are actually very likely to be screwed, you may have seen this interview recently with Thomas Pettifee. Guys, if you haven't already, be sure to join me over on Moomoo, the sponsor of today's video, using the link in the description below. You can currently get up to 17 free stocks, entirely commission-free trading, and free level 2 market data. Moomoo is very easy to use and has tons of technical indicators and advanced charting tools. Moomoo also has free 24-7 customer support and you can trade around the clock. This is an interview with Thomas Pettipi that went live yesterday where Thomas Pettipi said he's very sad for all of those invested that are likely to lose money in AMC and in GameStop. But as Phil For Real tweeted, he said, forget the FUD lawsuit, let's talk about Thomas Pettifee's body language when he was talking about AMC. And as Ferry tweeted, he said, Thomas Pettifee is looking very drained. But why? AMC is only a tiny mid-cap stock. If everything is pretty balanced, and actually there's more people long than there is short on AMC, why is it a terrible situation? 
Surely if more of Thomas Pettifee's customers are long on AMC, isn't that actually good for Thomas Pettifee in the long run? Or if it's fairly balanced and AMC doesn't really go either way, surely it doesn't make a significant difference for him. But also weirdly enough, if the majority of Thomas Pettifee's clients are long on AMC, why has AMC fallen by 70 or 80 or 90% if there's no illegal activity going on? And again, if there's no illegal activity going on, if there's just simply a small reverse split, why is Thomas Pettifee looking so sad and so worried during this interview? As Sammy tweeted, he said, so let me get this straight. Shields are pushing the no vote, Adam Aaron has been attacked, and now a lawsuit, all before the vote and the reverse split. Something smells funny. He said these shorts know they've messed up and locked in and they're about to get screwed. I think one of the main reasons Thomas Putifi is obviously looking sad is because he's likely very, very short on AMC and he knows this reverse split and conversion coming up is potentially likely to cause the squeeze and send him bankrupt. And as a last ditch attempt, they're bringing out this lawsuit to try and sue Adam Aaron and AMC and try and stop the reverse split, mostly to try and convince you to sell your shares at the last moment. And the reason why they're trying to get you to sell your shares at the last moment is likely because AMC has now spent its 13th day on the Regulation SHO Threshold Securities list. This was updated yesterday evening or yesterday night, confirming that AMC has now spent a full 13 days on the Regulation SHO list. This now theoretically means that these shorts or these FTDs on AMC must be closed out of and AMC cannot spend a 14th day on the regulation SHO list or it's a genuine reason for Adam Aaron to pursue it legally. Speaking of which, Adam Aaron is clearly not phased about this lawsuit as he tweeted yesterday saying he's going to be at yet another screening of Creed 3. But as I said the other day, remember that Adam Aaron can only act on credible information. And therefore, if AMC has spent 14, 15 or even 16 days on the regulation SHO list, that then gives Adam Aaron something credible to act on. And right now, it's also a massive, massive struggle for these shorts to get off the regulation SHO list because to close out of those FTDs, they need to find genuine AMC shares to borrow. And once again, that cost to borrow has skyrocketed up to a maximum of 955%, with an average of 924%, and even a minimum cost to borrow of 705%. That means these shorts are having to pay seven to 10 times their annual short position just to borrow real AMC shares to continue shorting. And obviously these shorts are struggling massively to get AMC off the regulation SHO list because these borrow fees are so high and these shorts can't afford the premium. And as Stonks Batman tweeted, he said, for the record, a stock with 500 million plus shares in circulation should never be on the threshold securities list. He said something is up and regulators need to figure it out because the clearinghouses are having issues. As I said, this now gives Adam Aaron credible information to act on if AMC spends longer than 13 days on that regulation SHO list. If these failed to delivers are not closed out of and do not return to normal levels, and if this cost of borrow rate stays sky high, Adam Aaron has genuine credible reasons. Now, obviously, I would like to see Adam Aaron acting on those reasons, but obviously, as I said at the start of this video, if this lawsuit somehow does cause the squeeze in the background, I'm not exactly going to be mad. While I personally do think this lawsuit is a bit of a joke and it's clearly not phased Adam Aaron at all as he's still tweeting away, I personally think this lawsuit won't really go anywhere. As I said, I do believe somebody's behind it because it seems so unusual for a pension fund that's lost millions of dollars in Microsoft, Amazon and Google and many other companies not to sue those companies, but to sue AMC for a mere $9,000 investment. Clearly somebody has been paid to post this lawsuit and it seems also really weird how some members of the community got hold of this lawsuit before even major news outlets did. Again, it also seems so weird for this lawsuit to come out just before the reverse split when they've had months and months to file the same lawsuit. But guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, guys, be sure to ding that notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.